Hi everyone, welcome to Curated by Becta's meal kit number 90 for March 2nd through 5th. Thanks so much for ordering this week and thanks for letting us be a part of your special celebration at home. Um, we've got a terrific menu for you tonight. The first two courses are very rustic French, uh, which is really close to my heart. I love this kind of cooking and the dessert is just decadent and fun. So why don't we go ahead and get started? I'm gonna make the, the video nice and tight tonight. Uh, it's a very easy uh, menu to finish. So I've gone ahead and popped the uh, herb roasted Cornish game hen in the oven. So just take the plastic container off of uh, the, the lid off the container and put it in the oven for 15 minutes at 400 degrees. I've also put my uh, garlic mashed potatoes in a pot with a lid and you put it on medium low and we're gonna warm it up uh, for about 10 minutes. I think I'm gonna move this up. I'm on three on my induction. I'm gonna to go to four to just give it a little bit more. And then I'm preheating a pan as well uh, for our chacrut, which is a uh, fermented cabbage uh, medley that uh, is classic in Alsace. And it's gonna be amazing with the main course. Uh, we've got another uh, dish or appetizer that is very uh, sort of all station. We've got uh, Perth pork, which is a pork producer we use, a local pork producer um, does these amazing uh, uh, pork, uh, heritage breed pork, and we make it at Becta into an, a gorgeous terrine. Um, we've got a frisé salad with it. So take the vinaigrette. Um, rather than dirtying a mixing bowl, you just use the box that it came in. And uh, we're gonna throw some salt and pepper in there. And you can do this early on with the frisé because it'll break it down a little bit because frisé is a very sturdy lettuce. Give it all a nice mix, get it all coated up. And then we're gonna start um, plating the appetizer. So terrine goes down first on the plate. Bring it to room temperature so that it is, um, it's tasty. Uh, it has been well seasoned, so you shouldn't need to add any salt to it. But of course, everything is to individual tastes. Um, then we've got the frisé, which is going to go on next. Because we all need a little greens in our life. And this is paired up with one of my favorite rosés from France. Uh, even though it might not sound French because uh, it's called St. John's. It is a, um, a restaurant, a famous restaurant in London, England that actually makes their own uh, wine or they contract out their own wine in uh, the south of France. They do a white, a red, and a rosé, but the rosé is probably my favorite. So here you go. Classic with these kinds of dishes. So we'll want to put the cornichon on there. I'll dust that diced up nice. And then um, some of our mustard. Make sure to leave some room for a crostini as well, because that's what you're going to spread the, um, the pork terrine on. And if you order the vegetarian one, you get this beautiful mushroom and walnut terrine. So uh, vegetarians are definitely not missing out this week, because that. We've got, uh, we've got one of our sous chefs at Becta, whose uh, partner is vegan, and he makes the most incredible vegan and vegetarian dishes because of it. Okay, don't need to lick the spoon on the mustard. I kind of know what that tastes like. And we've got these homemade crostinis, and we're gonna layer these out. You can sort of fan them out nicely if you like. So they look all beautiful. I would say you don't need more than five per person, but we send you with extra just in case. I'm gonna do five for the picture tonight. There we go. And I'm sure my son, 16 year old son, is gonna eat those up. But there is our Perth pork terrine with the frisé salad, the gherkins, the Dijon mustard, spicy Dijon mustard, and uh, our crostinis. There you have it. So let's get moving on our next courses then. Um, the demi glaze, by the way, is on low, should be on super low. You just need to melt it really. 
Um, make sure to give it a little whisk if you're finding that it is um, getting a little crust on the top. Of course, I can't see my little cute little whisker. So I'm just going to use a spoon, which is then eventually I'm going to use to plate it with as well. And I've got this little plate for my garnishes. Mashed potatoes, garlicky mash. Give them a stir. Make sure they're not burning, dehydrating too much, which is why we keep the lid on. Now, why don't we get started on our broccoli? There we go. And I believe the chef is saying um, four to six minutes, uh, and we're preheating the pan to medium high heat. There we go. So two tablespoons of neutral oil for two people. Uh, in my case, we're using the grapeseed oil, uh, but you can use canola oil. And this is actually the first week, unless I don't like the um, results and then I'm gonna change the instructions before you uh, go. But this is the first week that I can remember we don't have any butter to finish these off. I mean, there's lots of butter in the, uh, the garlic mash, so don't get me wrong, I'm not avoiding the butter. But, uh, but yeah, no added butter for you tonight. All right, once that pan gets hot, we're gonna throw uh, the broccoli in there, and then uh, that's gonna be for four to six minutes, and then the chacroot is gonna be just a, a quick warm up with salt and pepper. Uh, you don't need to add any oil to it, and that's just for two minutes to just warm uh, the uh, fermented cabbage up. While this is happening, why don't, well, you know what, the pan is it's probably good. I'm tossing the broccoli in there. By the way, these containers are either compostable or if you rinse them out, um, uh, recyclable in, uh, with, uh, with your cardboard. So whichever you prefer. Okay, I'm gonna do what I learned on, uh, on an article recently and not mess around with the vegetables too much. Get, give them some time without moving them in order to get a nice little crust going on. Um, okay, now I can do the dessert. So we've got a chocolate and caramel cookie bar here. Uh, you're gonna bring the ingredients to room temperature. Now this look, might look a little small, but it is super, super rich and decadent. And let me plate it up here so you guys can see. So we've got the pomegranate jam, and then we've got the chantilly. And so I'm gonna try to make things a little bit artistic here. And the jam just wants to sort of pool around. So I'm gonna let it do what it needs to do. And I'm gonna take the Chantilly, put it right on top. For those of you who have watched these videos before, you know that when I do these meal kits every week, we only do one dessert for the two of us, or the three of us. Which you can do as well, by the way, if you order these meal kits, you can order one three course and one two course meal, which is basically what we're doing but with the wine pairings, of course. Very key. Okay. Um, does look like I want to clean up the plate a little bit. Paper towels are a chef's best friend. And that is our chocolate and caramel cookie bar with the pomegranate jam and uh, Chantilly. Cannot wait to get into that. It's funny, this pan is sort of soaking up the oil. I feel like I need to add a little bit more to the broccoli. You use it at your discretion. And again, I'm gonna change the instructions. So if you are reading them and saying, hey, wait a minute, there's butter in the broccoli. It's because maybe I felt like it needed a little bit more. Um, you know, the chef gives me license to make some suggestions after the meal. And that's why we do these meal kit videos other than to keep you entertained. Because why not? Um, I do want to put it out there, by the way, if you guys are watching this, um, we're looking for an amazing front of house manager. And now that we're expanding our services at our three restaurants, so if you guys know of anyone at any restaurant or maybe they've left the industry for a while, anyone that you think would work in our culture, 
I would be very grateful. You know what? I will buy you uh, a whole whack. I'll buy you four curated weeks of uh, meals with wine pairing. If you recommend a great front of house manager to us, you can just send me a note at steve at vecta.com. And uh, if they work out for three months, then uh, I'm going to give you a four week subscription to Curated by Becca meal kit for two with wine pairings. How about that? I think that's a good deal. We've tried all of the typical online sites and we find that we don't get the candidates we're looking for. But if you're watching this, then you probably know our culture and you know what we're looking for. So I would really uh, love your help. Please send it along, along with your name. And uh, and yeah, what an amazing four-week uh, subscription thing to thank you for that. Now, in the meantime, we've got this wine. I haven't had this one in a while. I think it's been out of stock, but Connor brought it back for this week's menu. It's a Morza Tempranillo from Spain, from Rioja. Organic winery in the Ol Olivesa region. Tempranillo is aged in concrete tanks and fermented with native yeast, producing fresh and lively style from the region. Aromas of cherry, dried cranberry, violet, and lavender, medium bodied with fresh, bright red flute flavors. Hey Google, off. So that is my Cornish hen. So I'm gonna turn the oven off. I've got this going on. For my chacrut. I can turn this up a little bit. It was on two. Now I'm going to turn it to four. And we're going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to it. And the broccoli has got a nice little star on it as well. So let's season that with salt and pepper. And same thing with the chacrut. Don't go too much on the salt on the chacrut because it has some good amount of salt already through the fermentation process. And let me pull the Cornish hen out of the oven. You know what? I'm going to leave it in just to keep it warm while I'm plating the rest of this good stuff. Okay, the mashed potatoes looking good. I believe they go down first. Yeah, uh, and then broccoli and chacrut on top of that. So divide it up in half, which again is funny. If you've watched these videos before, you know that as soon as I finish taking the photos, we divide these two plates into three. So spread it out nicely. Mm. Yeah, that should not need any more salt and pepper. We've already seasoned up the mashed potatoes for you. Let's turn this guy off. And oh yeah, my spoon's over here. So that. Chacrut. Should be warm. I'm going to do the broccoli first. And again, you want a nice little char on things. Have it sticking out the side. So you can see all the gorgeous colors. This is a really easy uh, meal to finish. And I am really excited to try it because I love these flavors. My mom was from Quebec and her family came from France many years ago. And I don't know, maybe that's the connection, but I just love French cooking. And the chacrut, let's put it underneath. And again, a little bit on the side so that we can see it. There we go. Now onto our hen. And the herb roasted hen should be all nicely seasoned for you, so you shouldn't have to do any salt and pepper. This one is going to be better over here. This guy better here. And then our demi glaze is really what makes this totally special. And you can uh, put it on top of your hand if you like, but for pictures, 
it looks better on the side and then you just dip the hem. Yeah. You know what, I'm gonna try some on top. Maybe it'll be good for the photos. I'll do one on the side, one on top. We'll take photos of both and we'll see which one looks best. I think I'm going with the one on top. So there you have it. Our lovely herb roasted Cornish game hen with the charred broccoli, the chacrut, the garlic mashed potatoes, and that lovely demi glaze. Thanks so much for ordering this week and for being a part of this curated experience at home. Uh, I hope to see you in the restaurant or again on Curated Before Real Long, and I hope you love your dinner.